All right, David Hogan. David Hogan, that's who we're talking about today. I I came across a video about uh, a couple of months ago and then a couple of weeks ago, and I can't believe what this guy is speaking. And so I decided to look deeper, and that's what I'm bringing you today. Uh, I'll tell you, my production value stinks. I get it. Uh, if I was in film school, I would have failed the first day. So please have mercy on me. Uh, but David Hogan is a storyteller, and you're going to hear this today. He's so good at storytelling that it's made him a millionaire. I'm not kidding. So, uh, and, and again, after you hear him, you'll agree how anybody believes this is beyond me. But David Hogan has primarily centered his so-called ministry on dead raising. He wants to be known as a dead raiser, and he primarily is. He, according to him, his whole family can raise the dead and, of course, perform thousands of biblical miracles of epic proportion. He's been doing this about 30 years. So the clips that you're going to see here in my video, uh, they span through the course of 30 years. He's going to look very different in some of the video clips. Um, but I'll tell you up front, in no way, shape, or form does this man preach the true gospel. Uh, he's in the business of teaching fantasy, and because of that, he is shipwrecking the faith of untold thousands, and that's why he needs to be exposed. Now, for some of the Hogan fans who worried that will worry that I'm gonna you're gonna perceive me to take him out of context, I'm not taking him out of context, and the reason I can say that is because Hogan has no context. He has no context. He doesn't preach the gospel. If I had to assign a percentage to Hogan. He's 95% storytelling, and then 5% is where he's sharing verses, most of the time out of context, and butchering the scripture to support him. Um, you'll hear him glorify God, you'll hear him give thanks to Jesus, but uh, it's usually right after he has massively exalted himself, uh, and it's almost out of obligation. It's very strange, but this is what deception is. And so what I've done is in the description below, if you find yourself that you can't finish the video, that you can't take this guy, go to the uh, description below. You're going to see that I've timestamped all the categories, uh, including the summary. Just forward to the summary and I will continue. We'll discuss what we've heard in this video as well as further rants. But um, so the first category that you're going to see right here is called dancing. And the, the reason that I've titled it Dancing is because you're really going to get an insight to why Hogan does what he does. He'll tell these fantastic stories of miracles and people being raised from the dead. And as the receptive audience receives all this, they uh, right at uh, you know the pinnacle or the climax of his story, uh, the dead get raised and the audience will burst into cheers and praise and clapping and shouts and whistlings. And what this does to what this does to Hogan is that it re, I think it releases the dopamine, and uh, he is so tickled and so delighted that the audience believed him and cheered for him that he will break out into a little jig. He will begin to dance. He'll start jumping around like Mr. Bojangles, like a little leprechaun, and he loves it. He can't contain himself. So the first category is dancing. So we're going to start this thing. And then we'll be back at the end to comment. So get ready. Woo, here we go. The blind lady says to me, whenever you walked off, hot heat touched me on the head, went down to my feet, and when it got to the bottom, my eyes popped up. <laughs> And, and when, look, you know, and when she said that, another sister jumps up in the back. She's been blind 19 years. <laughs> what God did, I saw this with my own eyes. The Catholic priest, right on down, all the way. 
All of them laying knocked out, rolling, speaking in tongues. Back and forth. And Ms. Hogan just turned and looked at me. I told you. God didn't need you up yonder. He needs you back here. Now you get over yourself and act like who you really are. If they cart him off, I can just push his chair up. He said, the doctor said to me, the man's dead. I said, (laughs) No, I work for a guy. (laughs) Now you come back here in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, everybody on that plane, on our, back there with the chickens, (laughs) this guy, he went. started walking and I got by them. All of the deaf and dumb started hearing and speaking. All of the blind started seeing and the lame got up and walked. Yeah. That'd give anybody a dance. Her bones her hands straightened out as she was running. I'm not going to take responsibility for it. I'm going to just stay free and worship my king. If I run across somebody sick, I'm going to touch him. And then what he does is his business. Uh, my business is to worship the great king. My business is to go. My business is to preach. My business is to preach the kingdom of God is at hand. My business is to lay hands on the sick. My business is to cleanse lepers. He hits her. Bow! Wham! She hits the deck. 19 years, blind. Diabetes is the problem. And when she came to, whack! Her eyes are opened and the diabetes is gone. After 17 years and started walking. (laughs) Took six weeks and her body completely healed itself. a sudden that big old boy's head raised up and he took a breath and he looked at me (laughs) and he looks down on his knees looks at our guy in the face and says How do I get this Jesus? Jesus. 
Satani. Listen to me. You that I see that don't believe, thank you for coming. You're my favorite ones. You're my enemy. You're what's called a loser. A little girl told me like this, both my ears pop. As soon as your lips touch my cheek, my ears pop. Pow! And I could hear for the first time in my life. And she hugged me and I kissed her again. <laughs> Those two legs begin to move by their self. Those 15 year frozen legs moved around and came up under grandma and she stood up right in front of me. Huh? tell you this, straight out of the gun, pride and arrogance has never raised the dead. You can't prove it to me. I can prove to you where your church has pride and arrogance and it can't raise the dead. We're a few over 300 dead raisins now. And I personally have been in on 25. And now for the last 32 years, we've been raising the dead. Wow. Listen to me. I'm going to make a bold statement to you. Ready? Yes. There's not a disease left that we haven't seen healed. Yes. What? March of 18, I'm getting to go and hike in the great Himalayas. We're going to hike through Nepal, Tibet, going church to church, healing the sick and raising the dead. He never found out for, a, I don't, it was almost a week, but I had already died twice and been raised from the dead twice by the time he found out. This hand right here, this one, 37 dead raisins with this hand. You, you don't know another hand like this hand. Now, my family raises the dead, in case, in case y'all are wondering. And, and let me tell you how I know that they raised the dead. Because I died, and they prayed, and God brought me back. Twice. <laughs> and you kids, you listen to me. I'm here to tell you one thing. Jesus Look, this hand right here. You see that? Look at that chopped off finger. Look at the scars. You see that? A working man hand. And guess what he's done with this? 38 dead raisins with this hand. You hear me? But I went by there one, and I did, all I did was flip the little leg. Just flipped it, little foot. But this time it stayed in the air, and it was quivering. And I saw her take a breath. And I watched that little tongue just start shaking like they do. God raised my grandbaby from the dead. <laughs> I have died myself twice and been raised from the dead. Look at me. What's up with that? First of all, let's sort out a couple of things. I do raise the dead. 37, this hand, right here. Look at the chopped off fingers and the scar. No working man's hand. But and just, just all of a sudden, the dead man just gasped and came back to life. On the jet, in public. You want to raise the dead, you stand with me because I'm standing with Jesus.
That's what I came to Belize to tell you. Let's get to know each other. My name is David. Let me tell you what I do for a living. I heal the sick. I cleanse the lepers. I cast out demons. And I raise the dead. And you think you're brighter than I am. Well, at least I can raise the dead. Since that day, this hand right here, this one, this hand right here, normal chopped off finger hand, 33 dead raisins. See that? Now, since that day, there's a large number, over 500 dead raisins in Mexico in our work. You hear me? This hand right here has raised 38 people from the dead. This hand right here. I'm not talking about, look at it, look at it. Chopped off fingers, scarred up, I mean scarred, working man hand. The brother said, all right, we need you to come here. So I went in this room, right? And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at him, what's up? That's when Brother Domingo walked in. Raised from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I I I see dead raising is easy. Uh because I've been around it so much. It's just commonplace to us. It's natural, more natural to us. How many other people you ever run into that can show you their hand and say, with this hand there's been thirty two dead raisins? If I was you I'd listen. Instead of critique and judge, listen. Everybody wants to know how I raise the dead. Let me tell you how not to kill somebody. Because I'm dangerous. Let's throw it down because I can raise the dead. What can your God do? I got these Indians and there's eight of them. And every one of them raised the dead and so do I. I teach all of my kids and grandkids to raise the dead because that's what we do. I don't know what the problem is with you. <laughs> because I'm a mountain preacher. I, I just... can do, the only thing I can do is raise the dead. <laughs> I've experienced in South Africa, we had three dead raisins. Right at that point, approximately six or seven thousand new converts in the services I've been in. Every kind of miracle, cancers, blind, lame, deaf. This hand Right here, chopped off finger, scars, see the scars? A working man's hand. But this hand has raised 38 from the dead. Everybody tells me, I want what power you got. All right. How tough are you? Because I've been shot. I've been left for dead four times. Beat. They thought they beat me to death. Beat with clubs. Stoned with rocks. Imprisoned dozens of times. How, how can a guy like myself 
educated, gifted, blessed. You can see all of that stuff. But how can I stay engaged in seeking God for so long? You know, I've actually found, because listen, he wanted me to share this, but I've been shot. I've been left for dead three times. You hear me? Imprisoned dozens of times. Beat with clubs, stoned. I've noticed that that a lot, lots of people are nervous because I, when I get around them, if you personally feel challenged, it's because you should, because I am bad to the bone. I am a champion of the fire of God. I am a hero of the weak, the abused, the lost, and the dying. Do you understand that? And I'm one of the best alive at my job. They asked me to pray for them. And so I get the service that night, and there's, I don't know, 12, 15,000 people there. And I'm going, whoa, where'd all these people come from? So I asked my host, I said, well, what's happening here? They said, ain't nobody ever seen anybody like you. Everybody wanted to come see you because... But I had to be there. That's what heroes do. They raise the dead. They cleanse the lepers. They cast out demons. And they heal the sick. And they do it on purpose. I am a soldier of the gospel. And I'm better at this than you are, so let me do my job. I am a favorite son of a king. And people say to me, what gifts do you have? Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, all of them? Uh, and it's true? You boys, listen to me. I am bad the bone. I'm old. Jack, come on. <laughs> and the main engineer, big old, old, older gentleman, he comes out there and he goes, who are you to David Hogan? He said, I am David Hogan's grandson. He said, hey, you listen to me, son. I, all these men that are here volunteered for this job. For 30 years, we've been hearing about your grandpa. And we want to meet him. Everybody, I get asked the same questions. You'd think y'all would come up with something new. But <laughs> everywhere I go, how do you raise the dead? How do you get God to do the things? You, it, it, but it's never us. You're asking the wrong question. It's him. It's his presence. I like to be good at what I do. Now I'm one of the best alive. So how did we get there? How did we come from a zero to a champion? Everybody says to me, how are you so bright? So why are you so powerful? It's because I live in a pretty dark place. And then they blessed me with all sorts of stuff. I don't know why. And finally, when I'm getting off the thing, each one of them got me. They touched me. They blessed me. And each one of them said these words to me. I want a man like you when I get married. I am one of the most gifted men you'll ever meet. I can do anything. Anything. And then I'm going to tell you, the only way you're going anywhere is on your knees to Jesus.
because you're so used to that soft right here stuff. That's why you can't raise the dead and I can. You see, I like my job. I'm really good at this. We had an engineer come on the property the other day at this building site we're doing. You know, I roll in. I don't even. I don't show up much because it's Corbin's deal. I, I try to not let him, you know, do a train wreck or something, but I let him do what he can do, you know. And he says, "Papa, the head engineer of the light company wants to meet you, talk to you." I said, "All right, that's fine." What does he want, son? He said, "Papa, him and his whole crew volunteered for this project today." I said, "Why?" He said, because they've been hearing about you for 30 years. And they just want to touch you, make sure you're real. Because I'm good at my job. And God is better. All right. Psalms 89. This is the hero thing. Every morning at at, uh, 8 o'clock, I would open the door to these distribution centers. And anybody that came, I gave them whatever they wanted. FEMA came to me. Four times and gave me a blank check signed and said, we need you. Uh (laughs) Look, y'all, I'm serious. When, When the Red Cross pulled out, the day we left, let's say it like this. The day we left, we were feeding 10,000 meals a day. Washington called me, and uh, they tried to hire me, and they still are trying. When, when, when stress and dire need and problems occur, what people need is the men and women of God to be heroes. And that's what I am. And it doesn't matter where I go. That's that's who I am to people. And since Brownsville and a few places, I have become become popular in a few areas. Almost a commodity. They have nothing. They they, they don't have family. They don't have money. They don't have homes. They don't have running water, toilets, uh, food. It's it's miserable, right? Well, this is going to bother you now. Get ready. Well... It bothered me. And since I'm an endowed one, a hero, I don't like it. So heroes do something about it. Because I'm endowed. I'm gifted. I'm hero. (laughs) And actually, we, uh, several thousand of us, uh, laid on our face for 40 days and fasted. But out of everybody in this room, I would say I'm the most dangerous and the most serious. But I don't act like it. I mean, I could talk a zebra into thinking he's solid white. (laughs) I'm good at my job. And I'm harder to kill than anybody you've ever met. I'm telling you, I took a bullet in the face and God healed me and put me back in battle. I have scars from the top of my head all the way to the bottom of my feet from being clubbed with clubs and machetes. And every time God heals me and sends me back to war. Look at me. I like it. I'm not afraid of it. At all. I said, what I am is a son of a king. His name is Jesus Christ the righteous. I am here to heal your land. I am here to heal your sick. I am here to cast out demons. I am here to raise your dead. I'm here to cleanse your lepers. That's why I'm here. He said, you think you're Jesus? I said, absolutely. Do I look like I'm intimidated by you? And then they say, come with me. And they carry you to the town graveyard. And they show you their antipasados. The people that have gone on before, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, daddies, several generations, and their question is this, where have you been? 
And all you can do is cry and say, I'm sorry, but I'm here now and I will die for you. Everywhere I go, famous people ask me, David, you're loony. How are you so successful? You see how I am. I'm eat up with this. You see me. I'm possessed. I'm... The prophets found me. Y'all don't know about this. I haven't said anything, but the prophets found me. Seven prophets so far from seven different nations. And all of them have exactly the same word. And all of, them, all of them are awakened at their time zone at three in the morning by an angel of the Lord appearing to them, glowing and talking to them and saying, look, there's a man. You need to fight him. His name is David Hogan. Don't ever lose that yes sir thing. I am a powerful man and I'm around powerful people. You know what astounds them the most? I'll, I'll let you ask me some questions if you'd like. If you're not too intimidated. Most people are. Every day people ask me, how do you do this stuff like this? I just laugh at them. Because it's fun. I didn't go out and eat with the team today because my wife and I were fasting. My family and I fast every other day of our lives. We fast six months every year. How can I do this more? How, right now, as it is, I'm fasting seven months every year. Do you hear me? That's a pretty high standard. Every day of my life, I listen to no less than 50 chapters in the Bible. That is as low as I'm going. See, y'all don't know this, but I have now got to where in a day's time, I listen to 100 plus chapters of the Bible every day of my life. <laughs> my God, I, was, I had just spent the whole day praying. Do you understand? I've been fasting. I haven't eaten a thing all day. I am praying in tongues. My Bible's going. I've listened to well over 100 chapters. This is why every day of my life, I listen to 50 chapters in the Bible every day. You don't know this, but I am now have worked my personal prayer life and seeking God thing up to 100 chapters minimum a day, listening to the Bible and praying the Word of God. In a day's time, I listen to a hundred chapters plus every day. God spoke to us. We did this 21 day fast, me and all these elders. She said, oh no, brother David. I was blind for 18 years in both eyes and now I can see. <laughs> Yeah. So I walk over to that first big pot, had all the chicken in it. I said, listen up, pot. <laughs> and I reached and got it. I said, you know me. I am a son of God. Now, there seems to be a problem with you thinking you're going to run out of food over here. But that's not how it's going to go. Let me tell you how it's going to go. We're going to have enough. And the good thing about pots is they don't talk back to you. <laughs> I figure the day the pots start talking back, I'll be close to Jesus. <laughs> 
So I talked to the sauce pot, I talked to the beans, and I talked to the rice. We all came to an agreement. I have a plan, and you're going to do it. So I went back up to the shelf. I said, you have anything else? He said, no, that's fine. Thank you. So I went back to my tree. <laughs> Takes a long time to feed hundreds of people. So I'm waiting. Here comes the little hat again. <laughs> I said, what's wrong now? He said, come. <sighs> Golly, this guy, man. I walk over there. And I look in those pots, and it's full of food. Dude, the pots obeyed. I saw these people eating. These pots obeyed me. Now, what else you want? He said, how do you turn it off? <laughs> Dude. I looked at the pastor, I said, what's wrong with that guy? My Lord, man. He said, he's a leper. And he heard that if you put your hand on him, he can be healed. <laughs> and my, my wife has been healed of 14 incurable diseases. 14. The healings in that meeting, I didn't show you that video either. But in that meeting, 25, it was more than that, but I'll say 25, cripples. They're all sitting in a pile. And all of a sudden, you can't hear the noise for the noise. The tumult of the people that are freaked out. They're being delivered. They're being saved. They're being healed. And all of a sudden, this one lady, she's just looking me in the eyes. I'm watching her. I know her bones are snapping and popping. And she just stands up. And I go, whoa. I had no idea. 45 years. She pulled around like an animal. I, I'll tell you, there was 30 or 40 uh, eight people healed in that tent that evening. That man's bleeding. Golly. You know what happened? Anybody know? He died. Corbin, is he dead now? No, he's not. So how did he go from getting the top of his head knocked off? He's another innocent one. Because y'all don't know, because I didn't tell you the part of the story, but he was crippled, blind, and deaf when I found him. And God healed him. And he started following me. He's following me because of the power of God that healed him. And you know, my wife... My wife gets hit the most, I guess. You know, she's had 14 incurable diseases. I mean, that woman has suffered. I mean, some of them lengthy. So far, she's been healed out of all of them. I was down in Mexico there working, and we got all these miracles going, and blind and deaf and lame are walking, and all this stuff's happening. And this group of pastors came down. They, everybody wants to see Say, it looks like you. you. You'd like to go, but you're too afraid. You'd really like to see it, though. I know you would. And so they came down, and I was so excited, right? Because, man, this thing is awesome. People are getting saved every day. There's miracles every day. God is just whoop, doing stuff. And so we get down there, and in front of those guys... They saw the lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear. They saw it with their eyes.
We had a miracle of, a, of, a, of a, one of my main guys. His foot got, uh, fell off and died. We lost, he lost his foot. And we prayed for him, and God grew him a new foot. So, so they made all this food, and they cooking it, and they started feeding the people. And then they noticed that the, the pots weren't getting any less food in them. Hundreds of people ate the, out of those pots and it never run out of food. Okay, so in the middle of this death and this chaos and this panic, God's just standing there feeding everybody. Showing himself strong on their behalf in the middle of their hurt and pain. I, 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 got, I, I have to speak hope into you. And I told him, I said, well, what did they do? He said, Dad, they gave it to everybody in the whole town. And the pot still didn't get empty, so they put the pots in the freezer. In the and then I said, all right. That's all I'm doing. Now, who's going to get born again? 500 people ran. Yeah. That's like 1 60th of the population. And now all these hundreds and hundreds of people are getting born again. I said, now, is anybody sick? And everybody goes, yes. Hey, now I saw this with my very own eyes. They brought me four deaf and dumb people, one of them from birth. And I said, is this all the deaf and dumb? Yeah, this is it. I said, is this the best you can do? Well, we got some blind. Bring them too. Three. Blind. One of them from birth. I said, this is good. This is scriptural. You know, this is what Jesus did. Y'all understand that, right? I said, all right. What else you got? So here comes the, the, the cancers, the lame, uh, the, the, the tuberculosis, the AIDS, and they're all just stacked up here now, hundreds of them. I said, is there anything else you want to get rid of? And they said, we'll live with this. I said, okay. And I just lifted my hand. I didn't touch a soul. I said, in the name of Jesus, and I started walking. And as I started walking and I got by them, all of the deaf and dumb started hearing and speaking. All of the blind started seeing, and the lame got up and walked. Yeah. I'd give anybody a dance. Do you understand? I saw hundreds. Of miracles. You know, the first day, the first day, yes, dear, Jesus, we had 200 doctor verified miracles. Hallelujah. That's a bunch. Listen, she got, God took that uh, artificial help out of her and put a natural one back in. God took, God took the the, the bronchial asthma out of her and her lungs inflated. God took the cancer off of her. Her, her, her problem with the rheumatoid arthritis, her bones, her hands straightened out as she was running. But what I didn't know was he had been four years in therapy because he was at the mall with his wife in a runaway car, had smushed his leg from the knee down flat. And they had pinned him and rods and plates him back together. And when the angel of the Lord touched him, a new leg was created. Thank you for the glowing one. Since you were here, 40 days, four zero days. Since you were here, 36,636 people 
have given their life to Jesus. So I embraced this lady. The Holy Ghost smacked her. Oh, my goodness. It was awesome to watch. It was a little bit uncomfortable for the professionals. But when she hit the deck, the tumor popped out. Hear about that meeting? Lord, have mercy. That went well. The lepers and the AIDS and the tuberculosis people that got healed and the... I could give a flip what you have to say. And, and I'm not up on everybody's different opinions and persuasions, so I don't give a flying flip. And I don't give a flying flip. <laughs> I come here and it, you expect me to believe that? I don't give a flying flip. It doesn't, I don't give a flying flip. Men, you listen to me. I don't give a flying flip what you do, you old coward. You see me, son? I don't give a flip. I'm not afraid. Well, it's a good thing I lost my embarrassment, my fear of man, and my give a flying flip button. <laughs> you got to understand, I am one human being that don't give a flying flip what you do. So, first of all, you can't tell me what I got to do and can't do. Let's get that sorted, okay? I don't give a flip about your opinion. How many dead you got raised? None. Then keep your mouth shut. All right. I don't give a flying flip <laughs> about you being stale. Where are you going to sit, brother? Look at me in the face. I give a flying flip. It's a devil. Ah! That's easy. It's the enemy. Of the gospel. It's torturing a child. It's a demon. What you call it, I give a flying flip. So you, your Christianity, you won't do that. Well, you love your enemies, praise the Lord. <laughs> that is true, you do. After you got them on the ground by the throat. <laughs> I asked the head, uh, what do you call it, purser. I asked that lady, I says, do you mind if I raise this guy from the dead? <laughs> she looked at me. I don't know of any rules against it. <laughs> I said, okay. All right. It's true. They haven't thought up far enough ahead. So, I told you this was fun. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I saw this crowd out of the darkness. Black people can get up closer on you in the dark. In the last four years, I have been multiplied five times. That didn't even raise his eyebrows. I was hoping his eyebrows was up. <laughs> One time, I was in three places at the same day. Whoa. Wait a minute. At the same time, in three different continents. Oops. <laughs> there you go. Now I got you mad. Can't get rid of you on the dead raising. Can't get rid of you on the leukemia. I'll get rid of you on this one. There's people like sitting in that chair back there that need the power of God. They don't need another Bible verse and they don't need a cute pair of shoes or some new shirt because I, I, I've been caught several times myself I've been imprisoned several dozen times I've been beat and left for dead three times now 
have been shot. And so when that joker hit me, I don't react. I forgive you, praise the Lord. That's not my reaction. My reaction is grab the joker by the throat, put my knee down on him and rear back, fix it and take him, fix it and take him apart. That's my reaction. And of course, you'd be a better Christian than me. I'm sure of it. Just you're not out there doing it, so you can't talk, can you? So what do you do? Well, brother, praise the Lord, you say, in the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Well, you know what you did? You just got yourself and everybody else killed. I turned to the warlock, the first one. He's standing there, and I'm looking at him. K.I., I said. What's up? And he's chanting, ta, 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 curses me, at me. Black magic curses. And I'm just looking at him. Now I'm laughing at him. <laughs> so I took my hat off again. Bam! I head butted the guy. <laughs> I got away with it with a God. I, I reckon I can get away with it with these guys. <laughs> Ended up headbutting all three of them. And by the time I got through headbutting everybody, I was a little dizzy, uh, I'll say. <laughs> this is so much fun to me. You have no idea how, how what it, because they're there to kill you. They, You don't win battles in spiritual rounds by being some little sloppy, agape Christian. You have to soldier up and you have to put hell where it belongs. We're going to get in big trouble. Because God got her full of the Holy Ghost before we got her to pray for Jesus to save her. <laughs> Christianity, don't let Jesus work. He has to follow Christian rules. I want to I tell y'all, well, let me read a Bible verse to you so you can feel Christian. All right. So who's my enemy? No, I love everyone, Brother Hogan. Praise the Lord. All of us are distracted with our own personal worlds and circumstances. Praise the Lord, Brother Hogan. I need help. Praise God. I love Jesus. Praise God. Oh, I need help. Praise the Lord. I love Jesus. But my responsibility, if you want to go to hell, my responsibility is to let you go to hell. And every one of you believe that my responsibility is to not let anybody go to hell. I'm supposed to try to talk all y'all out of it. I'm not. I am through with that. I used to be really angry with you. And then I felt sorry for you. Now I'm neither. You're either going to suck it up and bring it or you're going to hell and I'm going to laugh at you. How about that? It isn't that I am fourth generation preacher. I'm an eighth-generation preacher. It's my personal desire to see Jesus. I had to see him alive. And I don't mean a feeling or a, or a good Bible verse. I got plenty of Bible verses. I don't need another teaching. get asked to go into places and to fight with warlocks and to fight with principalities and to fight against religious demon spirits start screaming I mean blood curdling stuff and I go over there and he's 
grabbing his side. Ah, I rip his shirt, move his hand, pull his shirt up, and there's a handprint got a hold of my boy pulling his side and intestines out of him. And for no apparent reason, a glowing man walked through the wall. His name is Jesus. But there's a new blue fire. It's healing. I want you to want it. It will help you. He's talking to a witch doctor. And before his very eyes, the, now, now you, you, most of you, <clears throat> You don't have a clue about what I'm ready to tell you. You've never, it's never even crossed your radar. He really, what did he turn into? First time it was a bat, big. But you, you actually saw him and. There was a man. Yeah. Turned the flashlight on to himself and went into a creature. I saw that with my eyes, yes sir. did you get it into your head you wanted to raise the dead? All right. That's a fair question. All right. Well, if you made it through, congratulations. You're seeing that my computer camera has crashed. I have a, I need a new uh, laptop. Anyway, uh, congratulations. You made it through. So the first thing I want to let you know is that I do believe in healings and the gifts of God. I really do. I just don't believe David Hogan is doing any of it. I believe David Hogan is a storytelling liar who has made his living traveling around the world and performing his act of storytelling. Hogan engages his audience through fantasy. And in turn, the audience pays him well for the entertainment which they receive. And he's been doing this a long time. Now, he claims that his ministry, his team, has raised over 500 people from the dead. It's incredible. He claims that his wife was cured from 14 incurable diseases. He claims that he raised his granddaughter and his grandson from the dead, and that he himself has been raised from the dead twice. It works out pretty good when you do this for a living, huh? He also claimed that he multiplied food. You know, like when Jesus fed the thousands, so he did the same thing. Hogan claims that thousands of astonishing miracles uh, have been performed in his ministry. Thousands. Now, if you take nothing else away from this summary, listen to this. All of this he claims with zero evidence. Zero evidence. Nothing. Now, some of his additional claims, including him saying that seven prophets found him, you know, like the Messiah. You can cite John 141 for this. When Andrew went to Simon and said, hey, we have found the Messiah. Again, this guy is assigning to himself messianic attributes. But as his story went, he said, Seven prophets from seven different countries were awakened from their sleep at exactly 3 a.m. on the same night where a glowing angel of the Lord instructed these very important prophets to seek a man named David Hogan. <laughs> wow. This is raging narcissism. And I'm so glad that he told us this story because, you know, if somebody's listening and they want to, they can... Write the next book we can add to the Bible. We'll call it the Book of Hogan, because that's how important he sounds. Now, he also claims that he himself was multiplied, you know, like the food. He was multiplied. He says that he, David Hogan, preached on three different continents on the same day at the same time. 
It's the fantasy is is unsearchable. But these are the kind of stories you tell when you have gullible audiences who refuse to hold him accountable. Now, do you know why Hogan loves his job? It's because he's created his own personal Spideyverse, his own universe, you know, like Spider-Man, where he's the hero in all of his comic book stories. He even tells you, and you heard many times, I'm a hero. I'm a hero. I'm bad to the bone. I'm dangerous. The insulting, or I should say one of the, the greatest insults, is I would call this stolen valor. You know, there's been many Christian soldiers, because, you know, Hogan refers to himself as a soldier, yet he offers zero proof. But there's been many soldiers, Christian soldiers, spiritual Christian soldiers, who have actually, for real, endured perilous times, perilous situations. And through faith in abiding in our Holy Bible, they have either made it through, giving glory to God and Him only, or in some cases they were martyred. But we know Hogan has not gone through these things. Now, that's not to say that it's not rough down there in Mexico. I'm sure they probably do deal with cartels. But for the fantasy stories that he tells, you know, having to do with Jesus, I just don't buy it. So I definitely consider this stolen valor. He's not worthy of this type of bragatory rhetoric. And that's what it is. So, now don't get me wrong, I suppose there's nothing wrong with sharing stories, you know, if it glorifies God, if it edifies the body of Christ. But when this is all you do, it's not right. It's unholy. Again, 95% of what he does is tell stories and glorify himself with unverifiable and unconfirmed miracles. Now, I want to give you a comparison, because this is what David Hogan has accomplished. Listen to this scenario. Imagine if a guy shows up at Madison Square Garden, and there's a packed crowd, and he gets on stage, and he begins to tell the crowd that he's one of the greatest basketball players ever. And then he spends the next 90 minutes telling stories of great basketball victories to include spectacular and acrobatic slam dunks, last second half court buzzer shots, game winning free throws, hook shots that would make Kareem Abdul-Jabbar envious, fadeaway jumpers, the crowd roars. This is what he does. And the people listening, well, they believe him. And then he proceeds to travel the world for the next 30 or 40 years telling this same fantastic basketball stories, you know, rock star stories over and over again. And his stories become even more elaborate, more fantastical and incredible. Pretty soon they're booking, you know, different venues and he's telling this same story. Up, what a great basketball player he is. I'm the best. And the people cheer and they give him their money. And this great basketball player accomplished an incredible thing. He's convinced these hundreds of thousands of people that he was one of the greatest basketball legends ever. And he did all of this without ever showing one highlight reel, without showing anything to prove it, not even picking up a basketball. He never appeared on ESPN, no cover of Sports Illustrated, you know, because that's what happens to great basketball players, right? Just no evidence at all. He just said he was great and the people believed him. That's what David Hogan has done here. He just tells everyone that he's this great, miracle-working, dead-raising superstar, and he offers zero proof. And the people cheer him on, they believe him, and they pay him. They pay him so much money that he became a millionaire, all for telling stories. This is what he's done. I think you could tell from his demeanor also that he's an angry man. 
Now, Galatians 5.22 describes the fruit of the Spirit. Actually, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But Hogan was talking about grabbing people by the throat, putting them on the ground, headbutting warlocks, calling people that don't believe his stories, he calls them losers, and then he laughs at people that are going to hell. This is what he did and what he said. He said that he's in with God and that he's faithful and that, you know, he says all the time, Jesus is king. And that's why he can raise the dead. Well, tell me, when did Jesus grab people by the throat or headbutt his enemies, or laugh at those who are going to hell. Now, some might say, yeah, Drew, but, you know, he's down in Mexico where there's cartels and gangs and guns and danger and witchcraft. Well, to that I would say, show me in the Bible where we get to act hostile just because, you know, some locations are more dangerous than others. Do we get to change the gospel because we're in a more dangerous place? The true gospel is to allow the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of God to be preached to the lost, regardless of how dangerous they are. It's by God's power that people are saved. The true gospel doesn't afford us to pretend to headbutt our enemies and then travel up to the United States and, you know, take a tour and tell these stories, share this nonsense just to obtain cheers from adoring fans. Now, another thing to consider is that when Jesus traveled throughout his earthly ministry and he did astonishing miracles, he had crowds thronging to him. Right? Now, I'm not talking about crowds sitting in a, in a church. Everywhere he went, he was thronged. He couldn't hardly get any peace. So now you've got a guy like David Hogan who's doing even greater miracles with more frequency, yet he has no crowds thronging him. Now, he'll tell you that he does, but again, where is the evidence? And why don't we ever see any of these miracles done when he's up here in the States at any of these venues? We just don't see that. But people say, well, you're just a non-believer, Drew. No, why is this wrong? for somebody to want to see all these alleged miracles that he's done. Instead, it's, it's so much easier to just label people that question him, label them as losers and as enemies, because that's what he called them, his enemies, just because we don't believe what he's saying. And then, you know, another question for Hogan, Hogan, if you're listening, did it not or does it not even occur to you to grab a camera to start filming some of these dead raisings and some of these miracles? We've had pretty reliable cameras on Earth here for the, at least the last 40 years. And we've all got cameras on our cell phones now for, what, 17, 18 years? But no, nothing? Just, just not going to film this stuff? Okay. How about your team? Is no one inclined to get any videos of this? And again, Hogan's defenders will get mad at you and call you an unbeliever for simply not believing his tales. But to that, I would say, think of the hundreds, if not thousands, maybe even millions who would or who could see these miracles on video and come to Jesus and get saved. I mean, that's what miracles do, right? Is it wrong to want to see these things? It would benefit a lot of people. But nothing? No, we're not going to, we're just not, we're not filming nothing. Nothing gets filmed. Just listen to my stories and then, you know, instead of a video, watch my reenactment. Listen to me. And then he'll tell his story. And it's always the same when the dead come back to life. And the man sat up and he took a breath. <gasps> Yay! And the people all cheer. And then you get paid for it. Well, there's, there's not much more I can add, other than the fact that I, I may do part two, part three, maybe maybe much more. Because again, I, I've just scratched the surface of the tales that this guy tells. So Hogan, if you're listening, I here's what I'd wanna to say to you. 
take your hand, you know, the, the chopped off finger, the scars, working man's hand, and put it back in your pocket. There's a real gospel out. There's a real gospel out here. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the lost need to hear that to get saved, to come to Jesus, to have faith in Jesus, to be saved from an eternity in hell. That's what I would say to you. Stop with your fantasy fake stories. And if they're not fake and if they're not fantasy, put up or shut up. Let's see the evidence. Evidence is so easy to capture, especially when you say there's miracles happening every day. And for the listeners, I would say certainly pray for David Hogan. Pray that this man would come to the truth of Jesus Christ. And pray that the gullible followers would awaken and come away from this nonsense. Jesus Christ is enough. So until next time, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon.